At the start of the episode, the Crown Prince of Japan is shot while giving a speech in San Francisco. Chaos erupts, with some people fleeing the scene while others stand around in shock. Immediately after the shots echo, Frank is in a state of shock. He stares at those around him. He finally realizes his gun is exposed in his right hand. The little Japanese boy standing next to him and the boy's father both see the gun in Frank's hand. Frank puts the gun in his coat pocket, and at the same time, the necklace he made for Juliana slips onto the ground. Next, Tagomi and the crown princess tend to the wounded crown prince. Kaido immediately springs into action, shouting orders to stop anyone from leaving, finding the shooter, and confiscating all cameras so that no one sees their beloved leader in his weakened state. Wegener is on the podium, watching the drama play out. The crown princess leaves with the prince as he is transported to the hospital. Meanwhile, Frank manages to escape the grounds before the others, including Rudolf Wegener, get stuck inside. The vial, which we learn later is a microfilm of some sort, is still in Wegener's possession after he could not get it to the science minister. When he's about to be screened by the Japanese before they lead him away, he swallows the microfilm to keep its possession a secret. Back to his escape, Frank dodges guard patrols and hides his gun near a sewer. He returns home to find an upset Ed, who discusses his phone call with Juliana. Frank exclaims that Ed cannot speak with anyone about the gun. Upon further examination of the premises, Tagomi finds Juliana's necklace dropped by Frank. Once he arrives at the hospital, he finds a distressed princess following her man into the emergency room while Tagomi stares into his hands. Tagomi believes that he is responsible for the crown prince's life. As a trusted advisor, he had encouraged the prince to give his speech to avoid a shaky international appearance to other nations. The episode cuts to Juliana, who is finally back in San Francisco, and while she's excited to see Frank, he's not nearly as welcoming. After all, she just took off without giving him any notice and he was left to try and hold things together. She tries to ask Frank what is wrong after her distressing phone call with Ed, but Frank tells her about the shooting of the crown prince. Abruptly, Frank suggests that Juliana visit her worried mother and refuses to hug Juliana. Back at the hospital, the surgeon informs Tegomi and the crown princess about the crown prince's critical condition. With Frank being so cold, Juliana visits her mom and stepdad, both of whom have no idea about her trip to Cannon City and Trudy's death. Her mom talks about how tragic it was that Frank lost his sister, niece, and nephew. Upon hearing this, Juliana hurries home and embraces Frank, weeping into his shoulder and talking about how she regrets getting on the bus to Cannon City. She feels responsible for everything that's happened, including her changed relationship with Frank. She asks if they can go back to normal, but Frank says it's impossible and that, for now, he's just trying to survive until the next day. Meanwhile, Joe arrives back in New York City and parks his truck on Broadway. He looks at Frank's sketch of Juliana and then stuffs it in his pocket just before Nazi goons shove a bag over his head and kidnap him. Sometime later, Tagomi meets Wegener in a hotel room to discuss the microfilm and his escape from the Japanese patrol. Wegener reveals that he swallowed the microfilm to ensure its security. Although Tagomi asks him to leave for safety, Wegener insists on trying one more time to pass the information to the science minister to prevent another world war. He will get Wegener's passport back and get him on the flight to New York City. Tagomi explains that he no longer wants anyone else's blood on his hands as his actions jeopardized the prince's life. Frank returns to work at the gun factory, where Ed questions him about Juliana and the gun. Frank tells Ed to stop talking so much because it'll get them caught, but Ed doesn't think Juliana should be kept out of the loop. In the next scene, Inspector Kaido speaks with Sergeant Yoshida and admits they will have problems if the shooter isn't detained. As they walk, they notice a Japanese officer committing seppuku, a Japanese suicide ritual involving self-disembowelment and decapitation by a second, known as a kaishikunin. The official was likely being punished for allowing the crown prince's assassination attempt to occur. Kaido will have to commit seppuku if he's unable to find the assassin within a certain amount of time. Once the ritual is complete, Kaido asks Yoshida to act as his kaishikunin if it comes to that. Juliana returns to her dojo and learns that the police have been looking for her. Her teacher refuses to let her practice due to her fugitive status with the state. She leaves and goes to turn herself into the police. Yoshida questions her about where she went while she was missing. Juliana answers that she went looking for Trudy. Kaido joins them during the interrogation. They also ask her about Randall. Yoshida hits her in the face, and Kaido threatens her when she insists that she doesn't know Randall. Juliana rushes outside, finds Randall's address, and heads to his house, which the Kempeitai have ransacked. However, she finds crumpled photos of Trudy in the wreckage before being confronted by Karen, 
one of Randall's friends. She asks Juliana about the delivery of the film. After she confirms the film's safety, Juliana inquires about the film and the man in the high castle's use for the films. Dodging Juliana's questions, the resistance fighter tells Juliana that someone leaked the information about the films and Trudy. Juliana concludes that the leak is from within the Japanese Authority building, which has an open position for which she is qualified. As Juliana could search for the leak that killed Trudy and Randall, she decides to apply for the position. Switching to Joe, he is taken to Smith's office where Major Clem is waiting to debrief him. He was brought in using a fake kidnapping to keep his cover intact. Smith joins them during the questioning. They treat Joe as a hostile witness and act as if he failed in his mission. Smith is angry that Joe lost the film and didn't say enough about Juliana in his report. He threateningly tells Joe not to disobey a direct order from him again. After Smith has finished tearing Joe down, he thinks it's time for him to build Joe into the man he wants to see. After all, Joe did accomplish his mission to find and identify resistance members in the neutral zone. So, Smith invites Joe to his family picnic for VA Day the following day. Smith thinks it would do Joe good to spend time with his own kind in the community. Smith is baiting him to prove himself to his father figure. Afterward, Frank and Ed go to the memorial service for Laura and her children. They speak with Bill, Laura's husband before the event begins. Bill gets defensive about holding a normal service for his family. After the funeral has ended, Frank is introduced to Mark Sampson, Laura's former boss. Sampson tells Frank where he lives and invites him over. Back to the show's politics, Tagomi tries to persuade Kaido to hand over Wegener's passport. Kaido refuses, so Tagomi acquires a diplomatic ticket for Wegener to get him out of the Pacific States. On his way out of the hotel, Wegener secretly delivers the microfilm to the science minister despite the threat of the German officer next to the minister. Finally, Juliana arrives at the Japanese Authority building for the open position. During an awkward interview, Juliana is asked to showcase her body. When the man suggests that she perform sexual acts to secure the job position, she storms out of the room. As Juliana hurriedly leaves the office, she stumbles into Tagomi, which causes him to drop her necklace. She picks it up off the floor for him, then runs away down the hall. With concern, he watches her go. It's a bright and sunny day on Long Island. Joe walks to John Smith's home to celebrate VA Day. Smith's wife, Helen, and the entire family welcome Joe. On the other side of the nation, Juliana tries to mend her relationship with Frank, but things are undoubtedly rocky. She thinks they need to spend some time together, but he doesn't want to make her late for the dojo, so she suggests they plan a dinner date. Juliana, however, doesn't tell him about going to meet Tegomi for the job. Meanwhile, Joe follows Smith's son, Thomas, on tour throughout the house and ends up in Smith's private study room. After he looks around the office, Joe spots the grasshopper file about his mission. He resists the temptation to snatch the file and plays catch outside with the young Smith boy. Smith finds the boys and suggests that Joe ride along with him to the airport to pick up Helen's mother. Next, Juliana meets with Trade Minister Tagomi in the Japanese Authority building. While Juliana seems worried about why she's been called, it turns out that he's ready to offer her a job to sell tea. She suits her position well because she provides a welcoming face for Nazi visitors who frequent the building for official purposes. In the next scene, Yashida looks through the reports on the Crown Prince's shooting and finds out that the shot came from a gunman positioned above the prince. It means that the culprit wasn't anyone from the crowd where Frank was. Yashida then mentions the report to Kaido who suggests that the theory is still unconvincing. In other words, they don't want to admit that their security missed a sniper, so that they will blame someone in the crowd. Frank, meanwhile, is trying to get back to normal, but the police are on his tail. Even if Frank didn't shoot the crown prince, he's been implicated. The investigation report reveals that the weapon is a Colt .45 pistol, according to the man and boy who saw Frank at the speech. Therefore, Kaido orders a thorough search of antique dealers in the area. This leads Kaido to the shop where Frank purchased his bullets. Kaido questions the owner, who says a Japanese man living in Tibet bought the bullets. Kaido, however, suspects something is amiss. In New York, Smith and Joe arrive at the airport to pick up Helen's mother, only to find her flight canceled. The two men then encounter Wegner, whose flight to Europe has been delayed for hours, so Smith invites him back to the house with them. Wegener hesitates, but Smith insists since they haven't seen each other in 15 years. Later, Juliana serves tea in a meeting between trade ministry staff and German diplomats. The Germans shift the conversation to a discussion on the status of the crown prince. 
to which the Japanese team informs that the prince is doing much better and will survive. Uneasily, the German officer presses for more information until Tagomi ends the discussion on this private matter for the Japanese. While Juliana exits the room after serving tea, back at the Smith household, while everyone watches the parade, Joe attempts to sneak into Smith's office and steal the grasshopper file he noticed when he first arrived. He's unsuccessful, though, as he can't find the key to open the cabinet and retrieve the file. After the speech and the parade conclude, Smith criticizes the Japanese people's lack of respect for VA Day and relentless work ethic as only a means to an end. Here, Wegener defends the Japanese and suggests they simply want to avoid war. Tension seems to grow between Wegener and Smith. The former further questions some of their actions during the war and what they achieved, and Smith reminds him that they live in a better world now, so everything they did was worth it. Meanwhile, Smith asks Joe about Wegener before he reveals to Joe that Wegener is indeed lying. Smith and Helen knew all day but intentionally kept Joe out of the loop to fool Wegener. Unable to be objective due to his old friendship with Wegener, Smith asks Joe for advice to kill Wegener or let him go. The scene then cuts to Wegener leaving the house with officers waiting for him on the front lawn. Joe remarks that sacrifices must be made while Smith realizes that relationships should never obstruct a mission objective. At the Japanese Authority Building, Kaido asks why Tagomi issued a diplomatic visa to Wegener. Kaido is suspicious of Wegener since the crown prince was shot during his visit. Suspicious about Wegener's whereabouts, Kaido insinuates that Wegener may have involvement in the shooting. Still, Tagomi refutes the accusation by citing that Wegener was on stage during the assassination attempt. Before his exit, Kaido asks Tagomi to report all known information on Wegener. Tagomi meets with Juliana in his office and reminds her about the importance of loyalty. He stresses the need for him to trust Juliana. In response, Juliana offers her suspicion about Smith at the earlier meeting. He constantly touched his throat as he spoke about the shooting of the crown prince. Juliana's immediate response shows Tagomi that she intends to gain his loyalty. Juliana rushes home, already late for dinner with Frank. She apologizes to Frank but he's angry. He'd called the places she was supposed to be, looking for her, so he knows she's lying to him. Juliana explains that she's pursuing more information on the films. She gives incomplete information on what she's been up to. Frank is angry at her for not telling the whole truth. He then leaves Juliana alone as she shatters her glass. While Frank visits Mark Sampson, the guy from the funeral, at his home, Julia finds the meaning of Sakura code given to her by one of the officers at the Japanese Authority building. Based on the translation given to her by a co-worker, it's a word for a type of flower. She realizes that all the offices in the Japanese Authority building are named after flowers, and thus she needs to find Sakura. After getting a floor plan of the building, Juliana sneaks into the room called Sakura, Cherry Blossom. It's a large listening room, with at least a dozen people eavesdropping on phone conversations and taking notes on index cards. The cards are placed in bins with code names. One of the bins is labeled Grasshopper, like the title of the film Juliana transported. Juliana's revelation in the Japanese Authority building delivers a shocking twist. As she finds herself in the radio room along with the Grasshopper file, she sees Arnold, her stepfather, returning to his desk. He appears to be a supervisor. She hurries out of the room with the file before anyone acknowledges her presence. Joe, however, isn't so lucky. He's asked to stay the night by Helena and graciously accepts. He sees it as an opportunity to get into Smith's office and steal the file. When he manages to open the cabinet and snag the file in the middle of the night, he sees that every page is blank. Then, the light turns on and Joe turns around to see Smith has been watching him the entire time. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel grow. Wait for part 3. Thanks for watching.